So this next one here is top 10 terrifying things you should never, ever, 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 ever Google, right? I'm scared to even possibly ever look at anything that's when y'all Google, bro. Y'all search histories. <laughs> hey, man, I I just randomly don't mess with people's search histories, bro. You, 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 it'll change your outlook and perspective on somebody, maybe somebody close to you. I just leave people search histories alone, man. It's crazy out here in the world. It is literally crazy. So we're going to get into this video. If you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, join the family, and let's check this out. Whether it's illegal activity, horrifying injuries, or some terms that aren't exactly what they may seem, it's best to take my advice on this one and stay away from Googling these terms. Let's dive right into the top 10 terrifying things you should never Google. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Ring Avulsion. All right, if you're a Jimmy Fallon fan, you might remember a few years ago when he took a couple weeks break from the show, and when he came back, he clearly had a hand injury, which he explained was, of course, the reason for his absence. What it happened is that Jimmy experienced ring avulsion. This horrible thing is an injury that occurs when you're wearing a ring on your finger and it catches on something or somehow creates so much pressure that it severely damages the soft tissue on your finger. And what I mean- See, that's a question that I have, right? And and not only pertaining to this, but just in general, do y'all take y'all's wedding rings off? You know what I mean? Cause I don't, always have mine on like i don't even have like the marking indention of to show you know what i mean i wear it i take it off i wear it i take it off i wear it i take it off but i've seen the images of people whose fingers have swollen up a around their ring and they just can't get it off in my mind i'm thinking like don't that cut off circulation like, is, that shouldn't be good. But people still continue to wear it even though it's doing that. My mom was like that. Like, she couldn't take her rings off. And I'm like, no. That And that should be no disrespect to the sanctity of the marriage. That's just me being like, yeah, I like all my fingers. And that's cutting off circulation, especially if your hand is, you know what I mean? So... Ah, uh, it's just a question I had. Just seeing this picture alone, just or or thinking about him, that's that's just crazy to me. It's so much pressure that it severely damages the soft tissue on your finger. And what I mean by severely damages is that it can basically like almost take your finger off without really taking it off, if you know what I mean. Or or it can like deglove it, where it's basically like skinned. Either way, it's absolutely terrible. And while Jimmy turned it into a great story, it's definitely not a pretty sight. And a Google search could bring about some pretty gruesome image results. In our number nine spot today, we have pressure cooker backpacks. This one is. It's gonna be pretty self-explanatory, but someone learned the hard way that the combination of Googling the words pressure cooker bombs and then backpacks is one that no one should dare. In 2013, a Suffolk County man Googled these- I'm sorry. I'm not never putting that word in none of my searches, bro. Like, it's certain things I just will not put. Is one that no one should dare. In 2013, a Suffolk County man Googled these things and the police later showed up to his house. I mean, yeah, it's definitely a strange combination of things to Google one after the other, but in case it isn't just a coincidence, I'm glad someone is looking out for these kinds of things. In the end, after some investigation, the police were able to determine that there was no threat and that the man Man was just feeling a little curious that day. I'm sure, he also learned a very valuable lesson and likely regrets his search history. In our number no, another, uh, you know, who else you should have this conversation with? Your kids. Because they don't be thinking like we think. They just randomly see something or a topic discussed on TV or on YouTube or something. Somebody say something and go to searching. Before you know, <laughs> SWAT could be at your door. I'm sure he also learned a very valuable lesson and likely regrets his search history. In our number eight spot today, we have insider trading. Listen, I don't know anything about trading or stocks or anything like that, but I have learned to never Google the words insider trading in an international really? account. Someone else made this mistake and ended up paying the consequences. Back in July of 2017, MIT researcher Fei Yan ended up being arrested after he Googled that phrase and then allegedly purchased a bunch of 
stock. The arresting charges were three counts of fraud because federal prosecutors claimed that this stock that was purchased made him $120,000 in illegal profits. Apparently, this guy was using information that was obtained through his spouse's job, which gave illegal insight into certain trading options in order to make these trades, but not before Googling how to avoid law enforcement while doing it and a bunch of other things that created quite a clear timeline for authorities during the investigation. Oh, so he wasn't just Googling it just to, to get information on the topic. No, fam was Googling it, trying to make money and avoid the police and the IRS. Bro, I, as a per, take it from a person who trades. I do a little, I dabble in day trading, bro. Do not play around like that at all. No, 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 fam. You, you mess around and lose it all. Bunch of other things that created quite a clear timeline for authorities during the investigation. I guess this search is okay, should you not be planning to follow through on the illegal insider trading, but it's probably best just not to Google it at all, just to be as safe as possible. You don't want the police showing up at your door like the other guy. In our number seven spot today, we have the FDA Defect Levels Handbook. Each year, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, they release a report that details something that, honestly, I want to remain blissfully ignorant about. This report details what the maximum levels of different horrible things are that are legally allowed to be in the food that we all eat. What I mean by horrible things is stuff like rodent hairs, maggots, you know, stuff you really don't want in your food at all because what in the actual world that's horrible? For your own sanity, this is a good search to stay away from, but if you're one of the people who is just way too curious to stay away from it, just remember, that I tried to warn you. I mean, personally, I, I feel bad I clicked on this video because somebody's now gonna go search and it's gonna ruin your day. It's gonna ruin your day. Just leave, just do what she said, just leave it alone. I don't want to know how many bugs are allowed to be in my food. Oh. I just don't think I could handle it. Okay. In our number six spot today, we have Crocodile. This is the nickname that is used to describe desomorphine, which is a morphine derivative that has some extremely strong effects. This illicit substance, unfortunately, has what? found its way into the lives of those battling addiction, and it has absolutely wreaked havoc, and the results of its usage are truly terrifying. Unfortunately, much of the production of this substance is illegal, which only leads to an increase in the negative impact it has on the users. The side effects of it often are due to certain toxic substances, which does what is referred to as cooking the skin. Definitely sounds completely horrible. It can also lead to large-scale tissue infection or even damage in the area where it was administered. In fact, the effects of this substance are so bad that many refer to it as the flesh-eating drug. It's safe to say this is definitely something that no one should do and probably just don't Google it either. In our number five spot today, we have the Grizzly Tapes. Okay, you should never Google this because these videos should never be watched because this is something that should have never even been recorded. These tapes were the last thing left by Timothy Treadwell and his girlfriend. Timothy Treadwell was known as the Grizzly Man. He spent 13 years of his life going in and out of living with bears, which for the most part sounds like the most terrifying thing you could imagine, but for him, he wanted to show the world that you could live with bears and that they were not an animal to be feared. No. Well, even though he was able to spend over a decade in their presence, it's this living situation that would eventually lead to his death. Timothy was making a documentary about bears, so naturally he was spending quite a bit of time with them as he filmed. One day, while he was with a grizzly and filming for the doc alongside his girlfriend who was there to help him with the movie, the bear that they were interacting with ended up turning angry, frightened, or something happened that changed its behavior because it went on to kill both members of the oh. couple as the camera rolled on. It's horrible. You can't see too, too much of what is happening, but you sure can hear it all, which is definitely bad enough. In our number four See, this is what we be saying, man. And I, I know a lot of y'all echo the same sentiment, bro. A lot of these people, you see them and they be like, oh, I've, I've been doing this for years. So what is my response to that? So what? He just ain't got in the mood. Animals are just like humans, bro. And one day, they could be in a mood or have a mood swing or be have a feeling and respond. And what are you going to do? Nothing. 
You can't communicate to it to stop. You can't tell it's, oh, it, you're hurting me. They respond, bro. We've seen it happen with snakes, bears, you know, people who have the snakes in their house and they're wondering why what, what happened. Oh, my goodness. He's never done that before. All these wild animals that people have in their homes. Like, no, 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 bro. This has got to stop. They need to start, like, prohibiting. And maybe you, they tried to, and maybe he just went on out on his own and did it anyway. But this, this we got to stop this. Four spot today, we have a jigger. When I hear this word, my mind goes to the bartending tool. It's like a shot measurer, okay? After I finish up my work here, I go to work at a restaurant. I see these things every week. They're my friend. If you were interested in perhaps purchasing some new barware, however, be careful with your search when using this term. While the tool is all fine and well, a jigger flea is nightmare fuel. These little insects with the same name as the trusty tool like to burrow into skin where they then lay eggs. Oh. Yeah, definitely don't want any images of that coming up in your search. I'm just trying to look out for you, really. Yeah, these small little parasitic guys are only one millimeter at first, and when they initially burrow into your skin, it might just feel like a little itchy or whatever. But as their abdomens swell with eggs, pressure can be created, and this pressure could press on nerves or blood vessels, which not only is just awful to think about, but can cause pain that ranges from mild to severe. All in all, just be careful what you Google, because not everything is what it seems. In our number three I thought she was going somewhere totally different with that. You know what I mean? Totally different with that. And she still amazed me by it. I I, I gotta tip my hat to her. I was thinking something <laughs> different spot today we have the steve Irwin stingray video like yep. how random honestly but don't google it like why this one really gets me right in the feels steve Irwin, best known as the crocodile hunter was famous for his wildlife interactions but as many of us know this passion for animals and an interaction with one in particular sadly turned deadly on september 4th 2006 steve was taking part in the production of a documentary series oceans deadliest that day there was some not so great weather which led to a bit of a pause in the film since nothing was really going on, Steve decided to take a bit of a snorkel into the shallow waters nearby, and they filmed as he did this. He wanted to use the footage in his daughter's TV show, Bindi the Jungle Girl. As they swam in the water that day, Steve approached a stingray that was about two meters large, or six and a half feet, and he approached it from the back in order to try and get some footage of it swimming away. That is not what this stingray did, though. Instead, it propped on its front and started stabbing wildly with its tail as a defensive response. Unfortunately, this caused one of the bar pieces to pierce Steve's heart, which unfortunately led to his death. Despite the crew members administering CPR and rushing him to shore, there was just nothing that could be done. It is believed that this was the only fatality from a stingray that has ever been recorded on video. This is, of course, just tragic, but it also led to a bit of a war against stingrays afterwards. For weeks after his death, stingrays were being found on the beaches of Queensland with their tails cut off. No one is sure if this was done as an act of revenge against stingrays everywhere or what the case was but uh yeah this is one video that don't google and no one wants to see it it's just terrible it's sad number two and this is what i reference when people be like oh it's it's never happened before yeah and they said the same thing about his situation that never happened before so when somebody's like oh man don't worry it'll never happen to you if you ain't feeling it don't do it don't go based on that Seriously, because then it'll be like, oh, and when something does happen, they'll be like, oh, my gosh, this has never happened before. Hmm. There's that phrase again. Video that don't Google and no one wants to see it. It's just terrible. It's sad. In our number two spot today, we have found in fast food. Of course, we have all heard tales of people making stuff up to try and get some kind of free food from their favorite fast food restaurants. But also, there are some very real, very disturbing stories out there of stuff people have found, and it is all too searchable. If you searched things people have found in fast food, you'd be met with enough evidence to make you question every fast food meal you have ever and will ever eat in your life. People have found hardware parts, human skin, an entire rat, bugs, 
hair, and even a whole chicken head. I have a million questions, but I don't even want to attempt a Google search to find out the answers because I'm scared of what I might find out. Reading enough of these harrowing fast food tales is enough to ruin anyone's appetite. In our number one spot today, we have mouth larva. Pretty self-explanatory as to why you shouldn't Google this one, and I'm not even sure why anyone would. Maybe in an attempt to find moth larva information and there was a bit of a typo, but even then, maybe just stay away from Google that as well. Whatever reason you might be thinking of or accidentally typing mouth larva into the search bar, it's best to refrain from because this is one search that will just gross you right out. This search will definitely yield results of humans and other animals that have larva crawling in between their teeth. Yep, exactly what it sounds like. Mouth larva. Why? Larva and mouths. Why? It's horrible, it's disgusting, and there's not only photos, but there's videos too, in case you wanted to get really weird. Just because you can Google these things does not mean you should. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlov. Now listen, this video was meant to deter you away from this, bro. I know some people though, you got some people out there, this didn't do nothing but excite their curiosity and they can't wait. They've done shut this video off. They've stopped this video and they proceeded forward to get their search on. That is not what this video was for, bro. It was to prevent, prevent. This is if you, if you play sports, this is prevent defense. All right. Prevent. That's all this was for, man. And there's some crazy stuff out there, bro. And this just, this don't even scratch the surface. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what you thought of this. And stick around and stay tuned. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.